Hello friends, welcome to another lecture from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about the regulation of lac operon. Actually the regulation due to the presence of glucose and the scenarios when uh, the different concentration of glucose and lactose present in the media and how it affect the process of turning on and off of lac operon. Okay, so let's look at here. In, in the last video we talked about what is lac operon in a sense in an overview. And we know is that there are structural genes under one promoter which is the lac promoter and then we also have a lac inhibitor gene and a lac inhibitor promoter gene. And we also know that in the presence of lactose and normally the lac operon is turned off all the time because of this inhibitor that is produced it can interact and bind to the promoter as a result it will not allow RNA polymerase to transcribe the structural genes. But when there is lactose. Lactose can act as an inhibitor for the lac inhibitor molecule. So lactose is an inhibitor of lac inhibitor. So when it binds to the lac inhibitor, it modifies the lac inhibitor structure. As a result, this lac repressor molecule, lac repressor protein will not be allowed to properly bind to the promoter. So as a result, promoter becomes free. So RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter, transcribe the structural genes. And in the presence of lactose, synthesis of structural proteins are made and then those structural proteins helps in the lactose catabolism. So that was the idea of lac operon in a, in a sense. Now in this video we want to see the regulation in further deep level. Now let us say I told you earlier that in lac operon you know this idea of operon is that you need to take some food inside the bacteria. If you look at the perspective of a bacteria they need to uptake food from inside uh, from outside inside the cell and then they will use that food uh, for the different catabolic pathways to generate energy for their uh, different processes now that food source could be any kind of sugar and the most preferred type of sugar is glucose because the simplest format of the sugar and can be easily metabolized inside so if glucose is present in the environment any bacteria will first try to uptake the glucose first then any other secondary uh, carbohydrates. For example, here lactose is not a primary type of carbohydrate source that bacteria love because they need all this operon system to turn on to, to, to finally break down lactose right, or catabolize lactose. But if glucose is present, the process of glucose metabolism is very simple and it is always turned on inside the bacterial cell. So they want glucose first, then if glucose is depleted, then only they want other source of sugar such as lactose to uptake. So now let us see the scenario when there is a presence of glucose and absence of glucose and how this whole process is maintained at those phases. Now let us say, so for that we need to just I am erasing all this thing I hope you know all these names like lac Z codes for beta galactosidase, Y codes for permease, lac A codes for transacetylase. So I am erasing all the stuff because I want to draw another picture to explain this whole process to you. The same thing we will be talking about here that is uh, the construction will be the same but we will just uh, talk about some region before the lac promoter and that region is known as cap size, uh, cap site, catabolite activator protein site uh, that should be present somewhere in the promoter region there. So now let us see that in this uh, complete construction of operons. I need to draw uh, the part, some, some new extra parts that is present in the promoter area. So let me delete that completely and draw a new structure here. And we will see two separate scenarios actually here. Let me divide it in two parts and then explain it. Let us say this is one, this is another. Okay. Uh, in this case, let us say this is the promoter of lac i, this is the lac i and somewhere here this is the promoter for lac and this is the operator z, y, a, the structure. Same thing I will be drawing here, promoter i, then this is the promoter for lac. Z, Y, A. 
okay now if you look at here in the promoter of lac if you look at here in this in this regions carefully there is a, there is a, so many uh, sequences present in this promoter area and one site is here known as the cap binding site cap cap full form is catabolite activator protein so cap binding site is present somewhere upstream in the promoter of lac okay in lac promoter I should have draw there the operator and then Z Y A. Okay. So if you look at here in the cap side, let's let me draw the cap side with this green coloration here. This is the cap side. Similarly, here this is the cap side. So what is the role of this cap side? As a, as what we are looking here is the operon and when the operon is turned on or off in the presence or absence of glucose. So let's say here the scenario is glucose is present, lactose is present, both present. In this scenario, glucose is absent, lactose is present. Okay. Now let's see what happens in two in both of these cases. Now, if glucose is present, what it will do? The presence of glucose ultimately leads to the, I mean, if we let's first look at here in the normal process, let's first talk about if there is no glucose, only lactose present, then what will happen? The general kind of lac operon that we studied till now. So there is no glucose. If there is no glucose, another molecule concentration gets increased. That is cyclic AMP. There is an inverse relationship with the concentration of glucose with the concentration of cyclic AMP. That means if there is no glucose or less glucose, the concentration of cyclic AMP will be higher. And if there is high glucose, the concentration of cyclic AMP will go low. So here, as there is less glucose or there is no glucose, for example, the con cyclic AMP concentration is very, very high. Now, the cyclic AMP molecules will bind with another molecule known as catabolite activator protein or cap. Let us say this one catabolite activator protein. This is the cap and this is cyclic AMP. So cyclic AMP attaches with catabolite activator protein and forms a cyclic AMP cap complex. Now this cyclic AMP cap complex can go and attach to the cap binding site in the lac promoter. Okay. So once they go and bind to the cap binding site in the promoter, let us say here they are attached. They act as an inducer, they act as an inducer for the lac operon. How? When the cap and cyclic AMP is attached to the cap site, it triggers the binding of RNA polymerase. It triggers the binding of RNA polymerase and helps the transcription process. Okay? So the, if there is no glucose or very less glucose, lot of cyclic AMP will be produced, cyclic AMP will attach to the cap, cyclic AMP cap complex will sit to the cap binding region, it will help the RNA polymerase to properly bind to the promoter and start the transcription process. So, we will get so many copies of all those, ge all those uh, genes and finally, uh, we can transcribe those mRNAs and uh, translate those mRNAs to get the proteins. So, lac operon will be turned on and the signal will be much stronger this time. Okay? Remember, this is a completely different way controlled except for lac because you know, if lactose is present, that means obviously lactose is not allowing inhibitor to bind. This is first degree to, to give the signal thumbs up, turn on. Second thing is absence of glucose, cyclic AMP high helps the polymerase to sit and transcribe. So there is a dual degree of positive signal to turn the lactose operon on. Now let us imagine there is no glucose but there is no lactose. So what will happen? If there is no lactose, in that case, inhibitor will 
bind and keep bind to the operator side. So inhibitor will occupy the operator side. It will not allow RNA polymerase to move and transcribe the genes. Even if there is no glucose, if there is no lactose, LAC operon will not be turned on. Okay? But if there is lactose, even in low concentration but no glucose at all, lactose operon will be turned on due to the catabolite activation of cyclic AMP and CAP. This is an activation pathway of LAC operon. This is the scenario when the scenario is no glucose, more lactose. Now let us focus to the next scenario. When there is lactose but there is also glucose, what will happen? According to our rule, if there is lactose, lac operon will be turned on. If there is no lactose, it will be turned off. So according to our general theory that we learned till now, lac operon should be turned on, right? But let us see because there is a glucose. Now I told you, any bacteria, they will not turn on the lactose operon perfectly until and unless they deplete all the glucose. Because if glucose is present in the medium, their job is to uptake glucose till the time glucose is depleted. So they will not turn the lac operon on until and unless the glucose are gone from the environment and glucose are uptaken from the environment. So how they will regulate this process? Let us see here. As there is high concentration of glucose, cyclic AMP concentration is very low because glucose is not allowed to produce cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP concentration is low. As a result of that, this cyclic AMP and cap complex, remember the complex I draw here also, cyclic AMP cap complex will not be formed. As there is no cyclic AMP cap complex, nothing will bind to this region. So cap binding region in the LAC operator site, LAC promoter site is not occupied by cyclic AMP cap complex. So if there is no cyclic AMP cap complex present in the cap binding region of the LAC promoter, even if the RNA polymerase is allowed to interact and start the transcription, but RNA polymerase will not get the positive signal to start the transcription. So even if they will see it and transcribe these genes, but they will be transcribed very, very slowly and a very slow rate inside. So even if the structural proteins will be made, but they will be made in very low concentrations inside the cell. So remember, concentration of cyclic AMP is very important because it is a dual regulation process because cyclic AMP cap is going to signal the RNA polymerase to turn on or turn off, uh, not actually on and off, but to tell the RNA polymerase to make more RNAs or not in the scenario. So this is very, very important. So as glucose is present, they will not allow this LAC operon to turn on in very high scale. Even if the lactose, uh, I mean beta galactosidase, permease will be made, but they will be made in very less concentration inside the cell because they do not get the positive signal from cap cyclic AMP complex. Now let us imagine after this process of uptaking of glucose slowly, slowly because they are uptaking glucose very, very fast, uh, but lactose is not breaking down inside the cell. So after some time glucose concentration is depleted, lactose, lactose is already present. So once the glucose concentration is depleted, the concentration of cyclic AMP will go up and then it will shift to the process which we talked here. In that case, cyclic AMP will go up, bind with cap, sit to the promoter, interact with the polymerase and then RNA polymerase can have the positive signal, can transcribe the genes more, LAC operon will be turned on in high scale. So this are the two scenarios which is controlled by the concentration of glucose in the environment and this is known as catabolite repression. Presence of this glucose catabolite inhibit uh, the other catabolism of lactose there. Okay? So glucose is acting like a bully uh, to turn off the process uh, of the lactose catabolism in bacteria. So this is how the regulation works there. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more and more interesting videos like that and definitely share this video with your friends. Thank you.